Hey everybody, welcome back to RC with Adam. My name is Adam, and today we're taking a look at the Speedy B F405 V3 stack. This is a 50 amp stack, and in case you're new to this, um, a stack just means that we have a flight controller board stacked on top of a 4-in-1 ESC board. So that's going to take care of your ESCs for your motors and your flight controller in one convenient stack. And this is a 30 by 30 sized board. Um, and it is a 50 amp, which is pretty high. So you can use this on something like a seven inch quad or something that's gonna pull more amps. Now we're gonna get into the specific features in just a moment, but bottom line up front, this is going to be, as far as I can tell, the best stack for the money right now. It has the most features uh, for the price point and it is, and it's a very good price point at right at $70 um, right now. Also, disclosure, SpeedyB did send this to me to test out free of charge, um, and I have not been able to test all of the features that this thing offers, and I haven't had a lot of time to fly it. I have flown it, I put it on a seven inch build, um, and so I have had some issues with that just because it's a seven inch, so I can't really vouch for its like performance because I'm having issues tuning the quad because it's a seven inch, so there's that. But I did put it in a build, and first we're gonna talk about the features that you're gonna get with this stack, and then we're gonna talk about the specifics uh, for my build that you that might help you uh, when you incorporate this stack into your build, and some things that I did not like about this and that I want to change or that you might not want for your build. So let's get started. And I will have a link to the product page down in the description, and I will have a link to the manual, and so you can follow right along with this. Also, big thanks to SpeedyB for sending this to me to test out and to be able to make this video and show you guys. So let's hit the highlights first. Uh, this has a wireless uh, flight controller and ESC full configuration uh, via Bluetooth. Now, you cannot actually flash the flight controller via Bluetooth, which is lame, um, but that's the way it is. Uh, it is a 50 amp ESC, and that's quite a bit higher than a lot of other uh, ESCs in this price point as well. A lot of them are like 40, 35 to 45 amp, um, so that's nice. Um, it does have onboard four level battery indicator like LEDs, but I don't really think that's like helpful because you probably just have OSD for your battery voltage setup. That's on screen display. Um, now it does have eight more. Uh, it does support eight motor outputs. Now. The stack itself will not support uh, the ESC stack. You can only do four motors with this stack, but if you got another ESC board, um, you could control those four ESCs using this same flight controller uh, by soldering the wires from the, you know, the other ESC board to this flight controller board. So if you want to run an X8 or some other you know, a, a octocopter, you can do that. This does have an SD card slot for black box logging, which is pretty cool uh, because I I really get annoyed with how fast internal memory fills up. So you can do uh, up to four gigabytes of black box logging. Now a note on the SD card, um, SpeedyB specifically, uh, they when they were contacting me, they said, hey, uh, one thing you want to tell people is that um, you know the not all memory cards will work. So you need, so it can't be like the, I want to say it's the SDXC that won't work. You want SD, S, SDCH. I can't remember. I'll, I'm going to put it up on the screen, the card that you want. Now they do offer this card or this, this stack with a memory card. I would probably just buy it with this memory card that they have tested and they know works for the black box logging because I've tried a uh, SanDisk, uh, I want to say it's an extreme uh, 32 gig SDHC card, and it was kind of working at first, and then it seems like it is not working. Um, or no, it actually, no, it did not work at all for black box logging. So I'm not sure what's up with that, even though I flashed it to the uh, FAT32, but I may need to... Um, I may need to uh, reconfigure that, erase it, and, and kind of change the setup of the format of the card. On the flight controller board, it has um, little uh, solder pads on the corners for LED strips, so that's pretty cool. They actually sent me some LED strips, so I'll probably show those in another video. Um, 
let's see, you can change the motor direction wirelessly, and that is because you can use the app, uh, the SpeedyB app, and you can do that via Bluetooth, so that is pretty cool. <clears throat> this comes with a huge uh, 1500 microfarad ca capacitor. It actually is so big that it gets in the way of the build, and we'll talk about that in a minute. I had to do a remote mount for that. Um, another big factor about this is it is DJI Air Unit plug and play. Um, now, just a side note, they keep saying Air Unit, but they show a picture of a Cadex Vista. Um, uh, and I'm pretty sure that both of those are going to be plug and play. Um, but just FYI, like that is a Cadex Vista that they're showing, not a uh, Air Unit. But I am using this with an Air Unit, and it is plug and play. Um, however, uh, I wish that the cord that they give you is longer, or the cable for that is, I wish that it was longer, but we'll talk about that later. Um, also, if you want to do OSD, make sure that you turn on um, the configuration port for um, UART 2, I believe it is, uh, to be able to get the OSD onto your uh, DJI goggles, uh, you know, through the air unit. Uh, this thing does have a lot of UARTs. It has uh, four UARTs, and a UART is like an in and out like port, uh, it stands for uh, universal asynchronous receive and transmit. That means you can hook up uh, receivers, plenty of other stuff that you want to use there. Um, it has five volt, two amp and nine volt, two amp um, individual BECs. And so basically what that means is there are pads on the flight controller and you can um, that, that output nine volt and you need nine volt if you're gonna do um, like an air unit and maybe some other stuff as well. Um, and so that's great. Uh, so if you don't want to do the plug and play with the connector for the air unit, you can just solder everything up with uh, solder pads. And that is one thing I really like about this. They do have the connectors on there, but they also have little solder pads for every, um, every uh, basically pin that would uh, also connect to the little plastic uh, connector port. So that's cool. And finally, for now, this has a built-in barometer. I have not tested the built-in barometer out. I don't know if it will even show up in the DJI OSD. That would be kind of cool, but um, I think that may be more of like an analog uh, benefit that you're going to get there. But it does have a built-in barometer, so that could be pretty cool. In case I didn't say it already, this is six cell capable, so anywhere from uh, I think three to six cells or something. But who flies three cells? So you know, four cell to six cell, no problem. One of the things that they advertise as a feature is like a cutout on the front of the flight controller for a camera is what they're saying. And I guess if you have like a super duper tight build where you put your camera like right next to your stack, I guess that's helpful. For me, that is not at all helpful. It's just a weird cutout um, because I have tons of room uh, between the camera and the stack itself. So that's it's i don't know it's just it's a thing it's there that's fine and of course if i didn't say already you can use either analog or dji video for this so no problem there um, you can do gps as well it has pads for that you can hook up a buzzer you can hook up led strips uh, you can do, of course, your uh, your PPM receiver or your S bus receivers. That is one thing I will say. SpeedyB did a great job documenting and giving diagrams and pictures and stuff of the flight controller and explaining what is on the board and all this stuff. So good job, SpeedyB. This uses a USB C port instead of a micro USB port, and I really like that because I don't like micro USB ports. They're just annoying and everything should be switching over to USB-C, so that's fantastic. Now, it may be worth noting that one of the reasons, pro probably one of the reasons why this uh, is coming in at such an affordable price is because it is using the slightly kind of older uh, F405 processor um, instead of an F7, but Honestly, I don't really know that you're gonna that that's gonna matter at all. There are other things that you can do with an F7 board, um, and I guess technically the performance is gonna be better. Um, I learned that at one point, but I kind of forgot it because I haven't been messing with that lately. Um, so, but basically, if you're looking for a budget stack anyway, that probably means that you don't really care about having the ultimate performance. In which case, the F405. Uh, chip is going to be just fine. 
All right, let's talk a little bit about building this thing and how I built, uh, how I put this into my seven inch uh, frame and kind of the results. So basically, it was just a really awkward getting this in here. The biggest problem, uh, the biggest problem is that the the way the XT60 connector comes out the back, it didn't leave me any room to put the DJI air unit. Now I did actually manage to get it in there because I kind of have the DJI air unit like raised up and then I have um, the XT60 coming out the back, but it's like going under the air unit. Um, but it's not ideal at all. Um, <clears throat> and then also the connector for the DJI air unit, uh, the, the like the plug and play connector, it points right out the back toward where you would hook up the capacitor. And so the, it's going to run right into the capacitor and get in the way of that connector port. So that seems like it wasn't really thought out very well. Um, and I thought about turning the board around, turning the whole stack around so that basically the XT60 would point towards the front of the quad, um, which by the way, would require extra uh, changes in beta flight. You would need to, um, you would need to remap uh, the motors, which is not hard actually now, it's super easy. Uh, but you would also need to make sure that you tell beta flight that the flight controller is pointing the opposite direction that it is supposed to by default. Uh, just that's just a little side note there. And the reason why I couldn't have it point uh, backwards is because um, the connector for the air unit wouldn't reach because it's so short. So it it's yeah, that was a little problem there. Um, and really, this frame like this frame is it's not a small frame, but it's I mean it's like an average frame basically. This is a uh, Source One V4 uh, with seven inch arms. And so this is made to uh, hold a, a ca uh, well, this is a CADEX air unit or a DJI CADEX air unit. Um, so it's made to hold that size uh, in the back, but it just kind of comes up to where the, the stack ends up being a little bit too close to the air unit. And especially if you have the, the main, you know, battery connector coming out the back. So that's really lame. And then the, the ES, or excuse me, the capacitor is just so large. Um, which is fine. I mean, a big capacitor is fine, but uh, there's no way that it was going to fit between the air unit and the stack. So I ended up doing a remote mount because um, basically I could either I could either have soldered this to the um, XT60 connector and just kind of had it at the have it at the connector. Uh, that would probably be a pretty good option, but for me it was just simpler to do a remote mount, attach the capacitor to the arm of the quadcopter and then uh, just run wires to the battery input pads. They're not the most ideal because you want the capacitor as close as possible you know, to those pads, but that's what I went with um, and it worked out okay. So, you know, it, it, it worked out okay and this thing does fly. I'm still learning how to tune the, the PIDs or the PID settings for a seven inch quad, so um, so this thing doesn't fly great, but it's not really because of the uh, flight controller. And I know that because I, ha I, I tried another flight controller, or actually it was a, like an all-in-one flight controller board uh, with this same setup, and I was having issues with it. And I think it's because of something about the combination of these motors with this frame uh, and the 7-inch props. So I can't really tell the performance of the actual flight controller. Um, but it it does fly at, at the very least. Just in case you're curious, SpeedyB did try flashing uh, Blue Jay firmware to these ESCs, um, and that's what I believe that's what I got when it arrived. Um, but they said they're going to default back to BL Heli S because uh, they were having some issues with some of their uh, test quads. It just Blue Jay firmware wasn't. Uh, consistently good enough on all of their quads that they tested this with so uh so they're back to bl heli s one other thing that i just want to nitpick um that i'm not sure if this is really you know necessarily matters but the way that the pads for each motor stick out like they're kind of like cut out like you know kind of like like sawtooth style um i think it would have been better if the pads were just sort of like you know separated uh, you know, insulated from each other, but 
still kept on one board because I feel like it, it's much more likely that you're going to break off one of these pads um, since it's kind of sticking out on its own. Like each one is sticking out on its own. So that's just kind of a nitpicky thing there. Um, I've actually never broken a pad, but I'm just saying, I don't know if that's like an option. Like if it's an option to build a board where the pads don't stick out individually, then I would say go for that. You should probably try doing that. Now, if you do get a DJI or CADEX uh, air unit, um, you, it's probably going to come with a cable that is going to be longer for the, you know, for the connector. So, um, you'll probably just have to, uh, solder it onto the pads, um, as opposed to using the plastic connector port, um, like in case you need more length, uh, like I did. So that is one option there. Um, otherwise, man, I'll tell you what, this is a pretty like sweet stack, um, especially for the price. Like I said, I feel like this could be just a, a very versatile stack. Like you could use this on a on a long range seven inch, um, or you could use this on like a high amp draw, uh, you know, five inch. Um, and then you've got that, the, the card for the black box logging, which I really like. So it's it's got a lot of potential, a lot of potential. Um, so I would definitely check it out. Um, and again, right now, especially with kind of you know some some uh, products are out of stock and hard to get back in stock. I think this looks like a pretty solid option, especially um, at the seventy dollar price point that we're looking at. So I will have links to those uh, or to this thing down in the description of this video. But hey, if you have any questions, please leave me a comment because I probably missed something. So I'll try to answer. Uh, any questions that you have. Thanks for watching, everybody. Now get out there and fly something. See you next time. We'll get, I mean, we get bars in our goggles.